All right, peoples, it's Ross. So I figured in this video, I give you guys some good ideas, some decent thoughts, a little bit of inspiration um, on some winter protection for your fig trees. So we've been talking a lot about this recently um, here on the channel, because this is really the time. This is the time of the year to start thinking about wrapping your figs, protecting them, getting them through the winter time. We're now finally getting uh, temperatures that may start to dip down below 20. Uh, you probably at this point maybe you've had a, a couple light frosts, maybe you even had a hard frost. So this is a really great time in my mind to get this whole thing situated as we go into December um, so that we can put these things away for the year and not have to worry about them uh, for the next six months or however long it is for you guys where you're at. Um, so one method that I really have been talking a lot about recently is the cut and cover method. Just very quickly, it's very simple. We cut them all back to six to 12 inches. We cover them with straw. And then we add a layer of tarp. And the reason for the tarp is it, it also acts as a nice layer of insulation, but um, it keeps the, the, uh, the straw dry and keeps the straw from blowing away. So these are really easy materials to find. They're affordable. Um, and then also, this is, in my mind, probably the best method for, you know, mass protecting um, a high dense planting of figs. So as an example, I have 120 square feet um, going this way lengthwise and then 120 square feet going against the house for a total of 240 square feet. In that square footage is actually 60 trees. So I'm covering uh, 60 trees really uh, efficiently in that sense, uh, which is quite different than, you know, the standard method of protection that a lot of people use, which is wrapping. And essentially we would get all the branches together, tie them up, and we would uh, probably wrap them with burlap, maybe some carpets, um, and then maybe even a tarp, all kinds of materials, whatever you guys have available. And, but that, you know, that takes some time. Um, not always a surefire method, but um, here's a method here that I thought was a nice alternative to wrapping uh, where you just get yourself a cone and you know one of these little traffic cones we've had for probably 20 years have just been sitting around really doing nothing. Um, I stuffed the top of the cone because there's a hole at the top with straw. You can even fill the the entire cone with straw uh, if you really wanted to get this super protected and then obviously around the base of the of the cone I've also filled in some straw just to keep these trees a bit insulated. Um, you know, these trees underneath here are quite young, so I'm not necessarily too concerned with wrapping them just yet. However, that will be my method of choice in the future uh, going forward. So uh, maybe I can get away with another year of using the cones, but at some point uh, we will do a video because I haven't even done a, a video for you guys talking about uh, how to protect them in terms of wrapping. So we will do that at some point, but I mean, obviously it'd be really simple if I really wanted to make this even beefier, I could wrap this entire thing with a carpet, even a, you know, a tarp. Um, even without the cone, I could basically take this off, have a bunch of branches here, tie them all together and, and do the same thing. You know, carpets are easy to find. Uh, you could probably get some of them for free or very cheap and they're really heavy and insulative. So that's a nice little thing uh, for sure that some people may have not thought of. But this is, a, I think, a great little method here. And I've done the same exact thing, actually. We'll, sh we'll show you in the front of the house. It's really quite simple, actually, is I've just done a similar thing, but with a pot. So you can see over there in the front, let me zoom in for you guys is that over there I have some younger fig trees, is that we've actually, you know, I'll, I'll take you guys over here. We actually have some pots and we turned them upside down, um, got myself some heavy ones, like we have a clay one here that is not gonna blow away in the wind. Also got myself a heavier plastic pot. Maybe you guys have yourself, maybe a bucket, a five gallon bucket from Home Depot would probably work really well. And I've just filled this these pots up with leaves, with straw, with, uh, with rice holes, any insulative mulch, wood chips works well. 
Um, and then the other method here is actually this, this little guy where we have ourselves a stake in the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And then we wrap the uh, chicken wire around the stake and it forms a nice little tube. And I do this just to naturally protect your trees, right? You might have this wrapped around the trunk. Maybe you guys have voles or rodents or different things that you know bite the bark. So this might be something you already have. You just fill that in with, uh, with leaves or wood chips. You don't want to use straw because it'll stay too wet. The nice thing about these, these pots here, even the clay one, is that whatever is underneath probably won't stay too wet and rot the bark. So you could get away with, let's say, straw underneath there. But I know both of these, all three of these trees are filled with leaves. And this is, of course, the time when all the leaves fall off the tree. So, you know, gather up some leaves and, and uh, make use of that material. I mean, that's, that's basically um, the basics there, guys. Um, there's not a whole lot to this. You know, something like, as an example, <clears throat> it's not a fig, but back in the corner over here, I bet some of you guys didn't know this, I actually have some tea plants. This is Camellia sinensis back here. It creates uh, black tea white tea, green tea. Actually, I could probably maybe even harvest this tit right here, make myself some tea. I'm trying to let it grow a little bit. Actually, it's, it's flowering. You can see back here, pretty beautiful flowers, I, I must say. But this is not really the most hardy plant here either. Um, you know, it's probably hardy, if I'm lucky, to zero degrees, uh, which it will get here uh, but if it is going to get to zero all I'm going to do is just throw a, a blanket over it you know this is an evergreen plant so you don't necessarily want to keep it covered like we would a fig all winter right we want to have those leaves still getting some of that photosynthesis um, but certainly if we can protect it why not just throw a tarp over top a blanket over top just on that really cold night and you're you're good um, so Another thing I guess is worth mentioning is what I haven't done yet is on these particular jujube trees that are in 10 gallon size pots, we just leave them outside all winter time. And you can get away with this with certain species of trees, but what you really gotta pay attention to is keeping the roots warm. So it might be too cold, zero degrees. I haven't tested it, um, but certainly you can leave certain uh, species of trees outside all winter, depending on where you live. And one great way to really ensure that you're gonna have some success with that is just get yourself some straw. I need to do that at some point today, is just get you know, a bunch of straw, even just uh, maybe you guys have some ornamental grasses that need to be cut back for the winter. Just throw that material over top of the, the pots um, and that will get them through the winter time. That'll insulate the soil. It'll keep it, not only will it keep it, uh, you know, warmer in the winter, but it also keeps it colder in the early spring. So these things don't leaf out too soon and then get hit by a frost, uh, a late frost. Um, so that's mostly it here, guys. I mean, depending on how warm it is where you're at, you could maybe even keep some potted figs out here as I've, I've discussed. As long as you can keep them above 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you may even be able to do this cut and cover method here where if I had a bunch of potted trees in the patio, group them all together, put them on their side and do the same thing where we fill it in with, uh, with straw or other materials and then cover that with a tarp and you could get away with that. You know, keeping them above uh, 15 degrees Fahrenheit at that point, I'm sure it wouldn't be that difficult for some of us maybe in his own 7A or a warmer 7A, 7B for certain. Um, if you're in a zone eight, you probably don't have to worry about this all that much, but you know, even a, a colder zone eight, you might get below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So that could be a great method instead of moving your potted trees to somewhere that's a lot warmer for the winter time, you know, like the greenhouse, like the root cellar or the garage, the, you know, the basement, whatever it is. So, that's kind of it here, guys. I thought this would give you guys some insight um, of some, just some different methods and things you guys can do. I know I didn't show you how to do this, but it's just so simple. Um, I really just threw a cone on top of some of those trees. So, all right, guys, we'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care and hit that subscribe button for me. I'll see you for the next one.